Hello, this is my five minute tutorial on Google Analytics for beginners. If you need to know how to install and set up Google Analytics, go to my blog, which is business.uk.com. I shall put a link in the description and quickly run through it anyway. So go to Google, sorry, google.com forward slash analytics, sign in, get yourself a Google account if you have to. And once you've filled in everything, you will get a piece of tracking code which you'll need to put on all your pages. Okay. If you've got a WordPress site, then you can get a plugin called Google Analyticator. And you'll still need to sign up using the google.com forward slash analytics page and use your Google Analytics UID, which usually starts with UA as the example shown there. Okay. Assuming you've done that, let's jump into Google Analytics itself. So you've got different tabs up here. Let's jump into the reporting tab. So dashboards, that's how you present your data back to your boss, basically. So you can make your own. Uh, there should be a few there as standard anyway. So it shows your visits, unique visitors, etc. You can delete these, change these, swap them around add a dimension, what type of visitors you want to show, what type of traffic. If you want to add a new one, um, look quite clever, what you can do is go new dashboard, import from, from gallery and just stand on the shoulders of giants and nick someone else's. Okay, intelligent events, you just set those up yourself, like if you want to get a notification, if your visitors go over a certain level or you get so many conversions within a set number of time. Okay, so that's intelligent events. Real time, it says what you'd imagine, so it shows how many people are on your site right now. So I've got one visitor at the moment on mobile. Okay, uh, next one is audience. So this is one you'll look at a lot. So jump into that. You've got overview, so that's an overview of your visitors. What you can do, jump into the date picker at the top, um, we'll look at the visitors just for March by clicking literally on the dates and clicking apply. And that gives the data for March. If you want to compare it to a previous month, so let's go February and compare to January. Let's change that to bad example because there's less days in February, but let's do it anyway. Um, it gives you kind of side by side comparison of the two months, which is obviously handy. You can do that for compare years, whatever you want. Up here, add segment. So that's adding a dimension. A dimension is basically a categorization of your traffic. So, for example, bounce sessions, that's sessions or people, if you like, that go to land on a page of your website. By land, I mean they click through from Google or from Facebook or whatever, they don't interact with your website in any way and then they come jump back off and they bounce back off to the page they came from. Okay, uh, the rest of it's pretty self-explanatory, mobile traffic, things like that. Okay, so you can chuck those in and those will be added to the graph as well. Here you can add metrics. Now, as opposed to dimensions, which are the categorizations of your traffic, Dimensions look at the numbers, the percentages, the averages, things like that. So, quite an important concept. Dimensions are categorizations, and the metrics are the numbers and all the math and what have you related to that. Okay, so I'll chuck in percentage of new sessions, and I'll get chucked on there as well. Okay, so that's the overview. Got sessions. Pages per session, etc., etc. Okay, page views. How many pages are viewed? A new versus returning customers. So you want a relatively high percentage of returning customers if you can. Sorry, returning visitors if you can. Just so people are coming back to your site because they know it's a good source of information or a good site to buy from or whatever. And then these will be explained on the sidebar here, like. Uh, demographics, system, etc. Okay, so let's have a quick look. So, go to demographics. This isn't set up, but it just shows like the age, the gender, the interest, etc. 
of people that are coming to your site, which is really handy. Uh, the geo is for uh, geography, I guess, or geographics, whatever. Um, so you've got language, people speak, so you can see uh, basically their own browsers or what have you that have uh, American English on. That's the biggest percentage that comes to my site. Uh, British and then Canadian. Location, literally where they're from, so where your visitors are from, within that date range, remember. So, uh, yeah, you can see on here, Britain and America, basically. Behaviour, what they do when they get to your site. So, new versus re returning, whether they come back to your site or not. Frequency and recency, so day since last session, things like that. How many sessions and page views. Okay, engagement, whether they interact with your website or not. How long they've been on your website. Technology, what are they using to view your website. So, what, uh, Internet Explorer, is it Google Chrome? Are they on Safari on an Apple device? Okay. And that's important because if you're designing a website, you want to make sure it's compatible with everything. But obviously, if you're not getting any, for example, no one's on Internet Explorer version 1, then you wouldn't probably bother optimizing your site for that browser. Okay, and this is what network they're on. I don't usually use that, to be honest, but just use their ISP provider. Mobile, what mobile devices they're using. Quite handy to note. Let's have a look down here. Sorry, that's a desk, desktop mobile tablet. And um, what if you've got everyone from desktop, for example, let's say they're buying up buying products every time they visit, but people from mobile aren't, people from tablet aren't, do you need to optimize better? Get do a bit of conversion rate optimization or redesign your website for people on mobile if nobody on mobile is staying on your website and not buying anything on your website. That's an example of when you'd want to have a look at this and what behavior, what they do when they get to your site. And let's jump on to acquisition. How are you getting people to your site? So in this case, this little um, dashboard, how many people are coming from organic search? So quite a lot. Social, social media, how many people direct, so they type in the domain name straight, straight into the browser and how many are referred from links from different websites. And then again, you can see what they do when they get to your website. So channels, so it's just breaking down, diving a bit deeper into the data relating to each method of coming to your website. Okay, so you might want to look at social media, you know, if you're investing in paid social advertising, is it worth it? What type of customers are converting the most highly? Which ones are bouncing straight from your site? Okay, go to search engine optimization. There's a lot of good data in about uh, keywords and things in search console, console or webmaster tools. So make sure you've got that set up as well, because as you can see, a lot of the keywords Google doesn't provide the majority of them anymore. It's interesting to see Nick Kearson driving a lot of the traffic to my site, MMA John Jones, Backhole, just interesting to see can I capitalize on that? Is there any on page optimization I can do to get more people clicking through to my site? I can go to Search Console or Webmaster Tools, see what I'm ranking for that term and see what the competition is and whether I can get to position one uh, with the content or can I put more content around Nick Kirsten or John Jones things like that to ask yourself okay let's jump on because we're trying to do this in a short space of time behavior so what do they do on my site this is the one I use a lot is site content all pages so what's the most popular page on your website so fighting a taller opponent as since I've put it on the site that's been the most popular page on the site average time on site so people are reading that nearly eight minutes that's quite interesting 
And then a new blog post, top five destinations to train at MMA. That's getting quite a lot of traffic as well. So just have a look over that, which are your most popular pages. Gives you an idea of what type of content people are after and what type of content, what niche perhaps you can rank well for. If there's not so much competition for a particular topic, you might get a lot of traffic from it. Site speed, how well your site's performing. Is it loading up fast for everyone? It's worth having a look on that. So it breaks it down per, by browser for you. Site search, that's just this, if you've got a search box on your website. I don't think this is installed on mine. That's no, not. Um, what topics people are searching for on there. And let's go to conversions. So if you set up goals, and you can have a look at compared dates of when these goals have been achieved, what pages you're getting the most conversions from. So this goal, which is set up in the admin tab. So where are we? So you go to admin tab and then goals. And then you can set up a new goal. So this is just, I'm not selling anything on my site, which is blackbeltwhitehat.com. not selling anything on there. So the only goal I've got on there is whether people are spending five minutes or more on the site. So you can set one of those up, like a custom goal, let's say. And then it tells you which pages are driving that conversion. Okay, so that's a very quick overview and if I get any hits on this tutorial I'll do a more in-depth one looking perhaps at this admin tab as well because you can set up filters and goals add other users to it really handy um, but those are the basic things to know for your first time on Google Analytics